Okay, still talking about the margin of error here. It says an exploratory challenge two, exercises five through seven, sample size of 50. So we've changed it now. We went from exercise uh, or exploratory challenge one, we had a sample size of 30. Now we've moved up to a sample size of 50. Do you think the margin of error would be different in exercise four? If you had sampled 50 chilts instead of 30, try to convince a partner that your conjecture is correct. Well, let's think about what we already know. We already know that as the sample size increases, our standard deviation decreases, right? So let's take that into this problem. Do you think if we increase our sample size, does the margin of error decrease? Yes, it will. Okay. So it might be different, but maybe only a little bit. I'm not sure why the sample size would make a difference because the, the counts would be different, but it would still be centered around the same proportion of 40% of a sample size of 30 is 12 chips, 40% of the sample of size 50 is 20 red chips. Different counts, but the same proportion. Okay, so you're gonna have different counts because of 50 and 30, but you're gonna still have the same proportion. Okay, now that didn't talk a whole lot about the margin of error, but let's keep going. It says, number six says, below are simulated sample distributions of the number of red chips for samples of 50 from population of various percentages of red chips. So just like we had earlier, uh, we had those for the sample size of 30. Here we have a sample size of 50. And I think, I hope you can tell, or just remember from the last video, that these are not as spread out. Okay, they're much taller, which means that they won't be as spread out. So remember, think about that a little bit when we answer these questions. Suppose you drew 30 red chips in a random sample of 50 from the mystery bag. What are your plausible values for the proportion of red chips in the mystery bag? So if we're gonna pull 30, or suppose we I'm sorry, suppose we drew 30 red chips from the sample of 50. What are the plausible values? So plausible values, whenever you say plausible values, you need to think of like an interval. So from what to what do you think this would fall in? And we're looking for 30 red chips. So we're gonna have to come over here and see where did 30 start occurring? And they start occurring here at the 50%. Here's 30, still for 60, still works for 70, but not for 80. Notice that there's not any for 80. So what you would say is it starts at 50% and goes to about 70%. Now remember, if we were, well, this is probably come up here in just a little bit, so let's just keep going. Now the plausible population proportions are 0.50 to 0.70, which is what we said. So now write an expression that contains the margin of error based on your answer, okay? So here, what we could say is it would be 0.60 plus or minus 0.10, right? If we split this, this is gonna be 60%, and then you can go up 10 and down 10. The margin of error would be exactly like what we said. So the margin of error would be 10%. Page six. Remember your conjecture from exercise five and compare the margin of error you found for a sample of size 30 from exercise three to the margin of error you found in sample size 50. What was the reasoning in exercise five correct? Or was your reasoning? Why or why not? 
Well, I forgot that the sample size might have to do with the spread of distribution, not just the center. So my reasoning was not correct. Remember what it said. It only talked about the proportion, right? It only talked about what it would be. Not didn't you notice when I said it, it didn't talk a lot about the margin of error. So it didn't take into consideration that the larger sample size, the smaller standard deviation. The proportion is going to remain the same. The mean would remain the same. But our standard deviation, the variability, the margin of error is going to change. So explain why the change in the margin of error makes sense. Well, the margin of error was 10 hundredths for the sample size of 50, which is less than the margin of error for the sample size of 30. It made sense that the margin of error would decrease as the sample size increases because as the sample size increases, the variability from sample to sample decreases and the sample proportions tend to be closer to the actual population proportion. Just what we said. As sample size goes up, standard deviation decreases, margin of error decreases. So in this lesson, you investigated how to make an inference about an unknown population proportion based on the random sample from the population. Remember, it was just an inference, an estimation. You learn how the random sample from populations with known proportions of success behave by simulating sample distributions for samples drawn from those populations. Comparing an observed proportion of successes from a random sample drawn from the population with an unknown proportion of successes to these sampling distributions gives you some information about the populations might produce a random sample like the one that you observed. These plausible proportion, population proportions can be described as P plus or minus the M, where M is called the margin of error. So you got your plausible population proportion, or P, plus or minus the margin of error. 